Hi, welcome again. So we are in the static analysis by tools lesson and when we are talking about static analysis by tools, we are always talking about analyzing source code. Sometimes static analysis tools can also be applied on design models, especially when the designs are created using UML kind of models, unified modeling language where you can create state transition models, use case models, the sequence diagrams, but we are mostly we use static analysis on the source code. So in this lesson, let us understand little more about what is source code, the anatomy of source code and given a source code, how to convert into a diagram, variety of diagrams can be made out of the source code and understand some of the basic issues of the structures that are available inside a source code. And this is very important. I don't know most of you who are appearing for ISTQB, you may not have written a lot of code yourself, but don't worry. Coding is not a rocket science. You can understand. And in fact, to do the structure based test design that we will learn later, understanding source code, and understanding the structures inside a source code is an important step. So in this lesson, we'll do that. So let us talk about two types of control flow diagrams that we can create given a source code. Source code is an English like statements to solve a problem. It will have a control flow. What is control flow? The execution of flow of instructions is determined by control flow. And if you look at a program, what is a program? Program will have a lot of data or variables. We declare, define, use variables and apply a kind of logic using the control flow statements and we can build almost any kind of logic to solve problems. That is why we write programs. So when you are given a source code as an ISTQB certified engineer, you must be able to convert that source code into a diagram, a control flow diagram. There are two styles of diagrams. Both of them serve the same purpose, but people use two styles of a diagram. A set of diagrams are called control flow graphs. Another set of diagrams are called control flow charts. What is this? They are basically a pictorial representation of the potentially many paths to a piece of source code. So there is a source code because it is too complex to read a code and understand how the flow and how the paths through the code are executing. It is very tough. So a pictorial representation will always help you to understand the code and then thus find some anomalies and defects in the code. And also they will show you the decision points and paths through the code in a very easy manner. And you don't need to worry about the details of the code. So that is why control flow diagrams are very important. As an engineer, as a test engineer, you should be able to learn this skill, how to look at a source code and understand and convert into a either a control flow chart or a control flow diagram. So let us understand that. So what is typically on your picture, you have a control flow graph. It is having certain circles and those circles are connected through some arrow lines. So let us, we'll understand each aspect of this control flow graph. And how does a control flow chart looks like? All of you in your college, you might have done flow charts. So control flow charts, they depict the same thing, but they use a little bit different notation. So on your screen, you are seeing a control flow chart. Let us now take a control flow graph and understand each element of the control flow graph. So here you have circles and those circles are called nodes. Nodes represent all types of statements, either a sequential set of statements. If you write read A, read B, read C, 
print a print b print c they are each is an instruction but they are all called sequential instructions the flow of execution follows from read a till print c all lines will be sequentially executed so the circles are we call them nodes they represent all types of statements the sequential instructions as well as decision statements in your source code lot of times if you want to alter the flow of execution you use some statements like if something is true then do this section else do another section and if this one kind of branching statements based on some decisions also in some kind of problem solving you will use what we call loops for this to this do or repeat the same thing until a condition is met or do this while a condition is met or while the condition do this all these are called loops so you will be representing both the sequential statements as well as the decision statements into these circles and we call them as nodes and all the lines that are connecting your circles to other circles and depicting the flow of execution they are called arrow edge or linked they are called typically most frequently we call them as edges so they are known as edges they represent branches that is indicate possible order of execution of statements so the again one more thing that will be in a flow graph is that we call that as regions any part of the graph which is enclosed inside some section like you are seeing on the screen there they are called the regions inside the control flow graph so these are the elements of a control flow graph and same thing can be depicted using control flow charts so control flow charts what they do they use rectangles and diamonds in the picture the rectangles indicate the statements they can contain one or more executable statements wherever you are seeing the diamond shape that is where you are altering the flow of execution of the program so they can be both if then else kind of statements also will be represented by diamonds and also whenever you have loops they also will be represented by diamonds so this is how a control flow chart looks like so the node is a single statement or a sequence of sequential statements they will be represented using that circle and we call it as nodes branch or edge is a logical link between two nodes indicates the next statements that can be executed decision statements are are branching statements there will be one entry point to a node and two or two exit points out of the node they will be depicting decision statements or branching statements and there are variety of branching and decision structures that we can apply now you are seeing on your diagram if and if kind of logic so here if condition is true then do this that is a left in the middle whatever circle you are seeing that is do this that part will be executed otherwise if it is false it will directly come to and if that is we call it is if then and if if condition is true do this else and if that is a simple decision structure and at times we use little bit differently this if then statement also if condition is true then do one part if it is false do another part and then and if that is if then else and if so the conditional statements can be written in this way as well then let us understand the loops in your control flow structures how do they look like so here you are taking an example of while do loop so while the condition is true then 
do a section of code and end while so whatever the do this part of the section segment of the code will be executed until the condition is met so here in this kind of while if you are designing loops using while do how does it work this loop based on the success of the condition it may not be executing even one time also so the statement can be executed zero or more times if you want if you the condition is not met the first time what happens it totally comes out so the loop will not be executed at all the do this part will not be executed at all but if the condition is met till it is there if the condition is there it will keep on doing the do this so if you want to design a loop to work for zero or more times always you will use while do kind of loop and also the same thing can be implemented using differently and that's what we call do this until condition so this is a little differently it has put so here at least once the loop will be executed and if you want to design a loop to execute one or more times you have to write like this do this until the condition is met so statement is executed one or more times in the previous one the statement is executed zero or more times that is while condition do and this one is we are calling it as do this until condition is met so these are typical structures we use in any source code to build all the logic that we want to solve in any program so let us now take a piece of source code and use whatever knowledge we have gained so far and build what we call a control flow diagram <coughs> so how do we do that so as we told each sequential statement will be represented by a node so let us have the first instruction that is make a list of items to sell it is one instruction it will be a, it's a sequential statement so let us put one node for that then immediately after that we have the instruction that is for each item in the list so we are designing a for loop here it's a loop so immediately followed by the first statement we have a first statement so create another circle and connect the first one to second one because immediately after executing the first statement it will come to the for statement so here in the for whenever you are doing it is a loop whenever you are depicting loop in a diagram immediately jump to end for because all the code that is written between this for and end for will be executed till the conditions are met in the for statement so immediately jump to end for statement <coughs> so so you have depicted end for now now inside this circle there is some logic being built so immediately inside the for what is happening we are having a statement called calculate cost of postage so that is a sequential statement so you put that so sequential statement has been put as circle now now after that we are having a statement called if a photograph is needed so this is a conditional statement so immediately followed by that represent that if and because if will end with end if so go jump to end if <coughs> and between if and end if if it is true what we are doing we are doing another statement called photograph this item transfer photograph to the pc so these are represented by another circle there then once you exit your end if you are having another sequential statement that is submit details of items to ebay so you have created one more node there and connected them and now you have come to the end of the program where you represent that with another node so this is how we make from a source code we can build what we call control flow graphs 
using the no nodes edges and based on what kind of control flow structure is being used if you are using a for loop start with for then depict end for and first create the loop and then systematically build similarly whenever you are coming up with the conditional statements like if if and if and in between whatever happens you build it so the equivalent flowchart for this logic is we are seeing on the picture so earlier one is a control flow diagram here you have a flow chart so this is how you build from a particular source code diagrams and these diagrams are very useful for you to understand the logic that happens in the program and to find potential defects there so also once you have a control flow diagram or a control flow chart of a logic you can measure a number and that number is called cyclomatic complexity number so what is that cyclomatic complexity number is a software metric used to measure the complexity of the software it has been developed by thomas mccab one computer software system engineer has talked about this metric first and it actually what does it measure it measures the complexity of the control flow structure of a program and mccab told that if the complexity is more then there may be chance of more defects in the program or if the complexity is above some particular threshold it is not a good program people have to redesign the program that is how people use this cyclomatic complexity so using a control flow diagram you can measure the cyclomatic complexity number of a program and how it can be measured if there is a flow chart you look the diamonds decision points in the diagram and add one to that and that is what indicates cyclomatic complexity number so if you look at the diagram here how many decision points are there there are three decision points are there so number of decision points plus one gives you the cyclomatic complexity of the control flow diagram so here in this example there are three decision points so add one to that and you will get your cyclomatic complexity number so if the cyclomatic complexity number is higher the program is not good so generally there is a Uh, benchmark that if cyclomatic complexity is more than five, the program has to be redesigned. Or the cyclomatic complexity number is higher, then it will become less testable. It is a very complicated program and it cannot be tested and it can have a lot of defects. So, what we have learned in this lesson is that try to understand the what happened, what is there in the source code, and given a source code, how to build. a control flow diagram or control flow charts and we also try to understand the structures the control flow structures especially the if then structure if then else structure do this while structure while do this structure we have all learned and this is important for you to understand even if you are not a Uh, not good at programming even if you are not a computer science student it is not rocket science please listen to the video if you don't understand more uh, frequently and also read the material that is written for this uh, lesson and learn if you have any questions please post those questions in the discussion forum and we will discuss about it thank you very much learn and have fun